All right, what's going on, Algebra 1? Uh, I had to delete our video from earlier because I was having trouble with it in my next class and still being able to show uh, the lesson. So here it is. This is what we talked about in class together. I'm going to scroll down so that you can see more of 5, and I'm going to work number 6. Okay, so if you need to go back, just pause the video, and you can see what we talked about for the other ones. You need to do number 4. Okay, so here we go. This is distribution. You gotta recognize distribution as something that you do to start the problem. On the left, six and 34 are not like terms because negative six has an X on it and that's a completely different idea. So I'm gonna start by rewriting the left. I'm gonna multiply negative eight times one and I'm gonna do negative eight times six. So don't put plus and minus, just write minus, okay? So now I've got like terms on the left and the right. I need to probably think about adding 48x over here because I want to keep things positive. If I was to add 6 to this side, it wouldn't make that positive. You don't have to do it that way, but it does make the problem slightly easier. So 48 minus 6, 42. Let's go ahead and say that's plus 34 equals negative 8. And similarly to the other problem next to it, let's put together like terms, 34, negative 8. Okay, let's get some, some room to write here. And so that gives you 42x still on the left. But now these two, since they're both negative, one's negative 8, and you're subtracting 34. It feels like adding, but it keeps the sign negative. Let's go ahead and finish out by dividing 42 to the other side, and you get negative 1. Okay. So I really need us to be in a place where anytime I give you an equation, whoop, 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 and just move stuff around, you got it easy as pie. All right. So let's talk about some of the stuff we've been doing with inequalities. Make sure you do the graph. So this is negative 1 times k. This is negative 1 times negative 4, positive 4, and then rewrite the less than 2. Next, let's talk about subtracting 4. So that gives you negative 2. And to finish this problem out, you could either think about it as multiplying by negative 1 or dividing by negative 1, but it doesn't matter because either one is going to change the sign in the middle. Okay, That sign has changed directions. And so, yes, two negatives divide to make positive. I want you to be able to see that negative right there. But let's go open at 2. Remember that means it's not including the value of 2. 2 is not greater than 2. It's the same. So you need that or equal line under it to make that true. And there we go, greater than 2. All right, this next one, it's a little two-stepper because it's going to take you two steps to get this going. Okay, 72 minus 8 is 64. And once again, we're going to divide by negative 8. And that's going to flip the sign to make negative 8. Okay, So let's go to the number line. Let's find negative 8. Again, it's going to be open because it's not or equal. And it's going left. Okay, So those are inequalities that just have like one solution and then greater than or less than that value. And so those are um, a little easier than what we call the compound inequalities. The compound inequalities require you to be able to do two directions. I want to solve the left, going left from the middle. And then later, I want to be able to go back and solve going right. So I'm going to start both problems the same. Let's subtract 5. That gives you negative 36. Let's divide negative 6. And you get 6 is greater than, I'm going to flip that sign because you divided by a negative. You're saying 6 is bigger than all of your answers. Okay, so we'll come back and talk about that in just a moment. Let's subtract 5 from this one. And you're going to get 0. Divide by negative 6, and again, you're getting 0. But the fact that you're dividing by negative, this is something you must learn. It's now flipping your inequality. So when we look at these two together, we're basically saying that n is greater than or equal to 0, but it's no bigger than 6. 
<coughs> excuse me. So let's go to an uh, zero and do a close dot. Let's go to six and do an open dot, and then let's just connect them to show like any value between here will solve that inequality. Notice that it's trapped in between them, just like this middle part is trapped in between the two sides here. Same concept, okay? So I want you to try number 10, and I'll check that one tomorrow. Let's go forward a little bit, and let's check out some of the ones we did today. So the ones we talked about today are called or problems, okay? Notice that on the ones we just did, they don't have the word or, and the graph is stuck between zero and six, like a compound trapped inequality. This one's very similar, but we have two problems to do. We don't have to split it because they're already split for us. So let's talk about each one separately, and then let's graph it and see what it looks like on the number line. So let's start, I'm gonna, subtract, I'm gonna add five to get greater than 56. I'm gonna divide by seven and you get eight. So R has to be greater than eight or, or, so we have another situation. Let's subtract 10. Negative 3R is greater than or equal to negative 18. Let's divide negative three and now the sign has to flip. We didn't do that here because you divided by positive seven. In this case, you are gonna have to flip it because you divided by a negative. And essentially you're putting the negative and the positive number lines like on opposite sides. So that's why it's real important to flip that. So in one case, in the first one, I'll do it in red. In the first one, you're saying R could be greater than eight. But in the second case, you're saying that R could be six or less, okay? So this is a different type of graph. You're basically saying it could be from here to the left or from here to the right, and there's a gap in the middle. Take a close look at the other one. This is called a trap. N is trapped between zero and six, no gap, okay? So pay close attention to those. They very much look like that uh, for each type of problem. So when you know you're doing an or, they look like this. When you know you're doing a compound trap, you know the graph looks like that. So I want you to try 10. I also want you to try 12, okay? And then, of course, if you did not have a chance in class to do number four, please go back and do that. Hope you have a good night, and I hope you do the homework, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.